London is a city of movement, offering commuters and tourists numerous ways of getting from A to B. But the city is looking to the next transport revolution, driverless cars. The government chose the East London borough of Greenwich to showcase the vehicles it hopes will put the UK at the forefront of a technology some think might change the face of motoring, and it could shake up public transport too. Three trials will take place this year in Greenwich, Milton Keynes and Bristol, involving simulators, driverless pods and buses like this 10-man shuttle. So we're just here on the uh, Meridian Shuttle, which is one of the autonomous vehicles that's going to be trialled as part of um, this project here in Greenwich. And uh, Nick Reed, who's the um, project lead, is going to just take me through how it works. Nick. Okay, so you use the, the touch screen here by pressing the screen, it opens up. We select our destination, we're going to go back to our start position. And then pressing start, the doors will close and the vehicle is detecting around it all the time using the laser sensors if there are any hazards and once it's safe to proceed, off we will go. This technology is part of a wider movement towards fully autonomous cars being pioneered by the likes of Google. In their fully driverless form, the cars have the potential to increase mobility for those who do not currently hold a licence, such as the elderly or disabled, and free up the six working weeks spent behind the wheel by the average driver in England. The Meridian Shuttle might not seem quite up to the standards of the Silicon Valley tech group, but it's not far off. It's actually more advanced than many people would imagine. In Greenwich, for example, they've already got a complex route which has been built up. It goes through a housing estate. People will be able to get on it, come to the tube station, use their mobile phones to bring it to their door. Um, and that kind of experiment will tell us what we need to know about safety and reliability and consumer acceptance. That consumer acceptance will be key if this technology is ever going to come to market, particularly in the form of a fully autonomous or driverless car. Would people actually feel confident putting themselves behind the wheel of one of these pods? Yes, as long as I could feel ensured that it would stop where I wanted it to and I could actually get out. I do have reservations about that it's going to go past where I want to go. I think it's fantastic. I think it's a great new concept. I think this is going to improve our lives, some people's lives so much on a day-to-day -day level. Um, I just think it's really impressive and a great innovative idea. I'm quite happy to I enjoy driving. So, oh no, I don't. Oh, I don't know what there is to be gained. What, you can do it when you're drunk? What? <coughs> if you're, if you want to move somewhere, I'm quite happy to have someone with some seats in the back of a board transit van. But beyond the issue of what the public makes of it lie equally challenging questions. Legislation in most countries prohibits the use of fully autonomous cars on public roads. Only four states in the US have introduced legislation to allow the testing of autonomous vehicles. The UK government says there is no legislative barrier to testing the cars on public roads. But it wants to review the legislation by summer 2017 to clear up issues around criminal and civil liability when an autonomous vehicle is involved in an accident. It would also look at whether changes would be needed to the MOT test to check the roadworthiness of autonomous vehicles. They might not look like the cars you and I drive today, but the government is hoping that pods like these will familiarise the public with the idea of autonomous driving. But before these cars hit the streets, there are key questions that need to be resolved, and it remains to be seen whether drivers will be comfortable handing the keys over to a robot. This is Andy Sharman for the Financial Times in Greenwich.